I'm Dr. Gil Welch. This video examines breast cancer screening using MRI, based on insights from the DENCE trial. The DENCE trial, published late in 2019, was a study testing the effect of adding MRI to routine mammography. It was a well-designed, well-executed study. The study population was women aged 50 to 75, with extremely dense breasts. To be eligible, women had to have no cancer found on the first mammogram. That makes sense. If a woman does have a cancer found, she's going to be treated. Women were then randomized into one of two groups. The intervention group received an MRI. The control group did not. Now time passes. The women are followed for the two-year interval prior to their next mammogram. But cancers can still appear, not because of screening, but because women feel a lump in their breast. These are the so-called interval cancers. And the primary finding of the DENCE trial was that adding MRI led to fewer interval cancers. The investigators, however, failed to provide a comprehensive accounting of all the cancers detected in the two groups. This spring, Dr. Zoll and I provide this accounting in the correspondent section of the New England Journal. As with all accounting, the important data are in the table. But first, it's important to know that DENCE is a randomized trial, the gold standard research designed for the evaluation of medical care. The trial assigned over 40,000 women solely by chance, like the flip of a coin, into either the MRI or no MRI group. Because the women are allocated solely by chance, the expectation is that the two groups will ultimately have the same number of cancers. The data in our table come directly from the DENCE trial. They're cobbled together from Figure 1, Table 3, and a table in the supplementary appendix. We then use a novel analytic method. It's called addition. Here is the comprehensive accounting of cancer diagnoses. There were no cancers found on the intake mammogram in either group. Recall, that was an eligibility criterion. There were 9.8 cancers found on MRI in the MRI group. There were none in the control group, because they didn't get an MRI. There were 2.5 interval cancers in the MRI group, and 5 in the control group. So the effect of MRI is 2.5 fewer interval cancers. That was the primary finding of the DENCE trial. There were 4.1 cancers found on subsequent mammogram in the MRI group, and 6 in the control group. So the effect of MRI is 1.9 fewer cancers on subsequent mammogram. Here's our novel analysis, adding the columns. A total of 16.4 cancers are found by MRI, as opposed to 11 in the control group. So the net effect of MRI is 5.4 more cancers overall. Remember, this is a randomized trial. The expectation is that the two groups will ultimately have the same number of cancers. Here's another way to look at it. Here are the MRI-detected cancers. Here are the interval cancers, and here are the cancers detected by a mammogram two years later. Because this is a randomized trial, we'd expect that the two groups will ultimately have the same number of cancers. So where are these 5.4 cancers in the control group? Are they going to appear later, or did they go away? The conventional explanation is that these 5.4 extra cancers found by MRI are growing very slowly. So slowly that, that they are not apparent on a mammogram two years later. If that's true, it means that over half of MRI detected cancers, okay, we performed a division here, are growing so slowly that they are undetectable by a mammogram two years later. The alternative explanation is that these 5.4 extra cancers spontaneously regress. They existed in the control group, but were never detected and had disappeared before the subsequent mammogram. 
spontaneous regression of cancer? That may sound crazy, except we're beginning to observe it in other cancers. Active surveillance of small kidney cancers reveals about a quarter regress. Active surveillance of small thyroid cancer reveals about a third regress. Why not breast cancer? As with all medical interventions, breast cancer screening using MRI comes with benefits and harms. The benefit is fewer interval cancers. The harm is more cancers overall. Fewer interval cancers may sound like an important benefit, but does this mean women live longer or live better? That's unknown, and because the effect is bound to be so tiny, I doubt we'll ever know. Plus, MRI leads women to have more breast biopsies. According to a recent article in JAMA, three times more. And with more cancers diagnosed, that means more cancer treatment. The truth is, the harms are more certain than the benefit. By the way, there's good news in breast cancer. Breast cancer mortality has fallen by 40% since 1990. That's huge. But the good news largely reflects improved treatment, not screening. The bad news is that breast cancer screening is stuck in a technological arms race. From plain film, to digital, to 3D, and now breast MRI. All in the effort to find more cancer. For too long, the best test has been the one that finds the most breast cancers. But surely, the best test is the one that finds only the breast cancers that matter.